At 35 years of age, my dear sister, you are waiting for a man who will come and propose to you in the airport. 35 years. You are not ready. You are not ready. You are waiting for a man to come and propose to you. 35. You don't enter men who pause. What it means that men will pause. <laughs> Break the law! Ask Christy, Nigerian Catholics. Hmm. Father John Oluama has finished this table. He has broken it to pieces. I am telling you. Now there is something I want to say. And I hope you will give me the audience to say it before this video is over. And that thing I'm about to say is very, very important. At 35 years of age, my dear sister, you are waiting for a man who will come and propose to you in the airport. 35 years. You are not ready. You are not ready. You are waiting for a man to come and propose to you. 35. You don't enter men who pause. What it means that men will pause. <laughs> Break the law! If you see this, I am saying this, it may sound funny, but I'm very serious about it. If you're a young girl here, marriage is your calling. You know you can be a good wife, a good mother. You desire it. You are 35. You happen to see any guy who is interested in you, but he does not have the courage. You know, some guys like some ladies, but they don't have the courage. Eh? There are guys that they don't have the courage. You discover that this guy has shown signs of liking you, but he doesn't have the courage to speak to you. My dear sister, break that useless law. Approach that guy. Make it. <laughs> hey, stop laughing. I'm serious. Stop, stop, stop. No, you people should not interrupt me until I finish this. Stop, stop. Break that useless convention. Meet the guy. Say, bro, I have noticed you look me somehow. I know you like me. You don't have the courage. The guy will mumishly be laughing and be not there, you know. Tell him I'll make it easy for you. Okay? Tell him your good qualities. I can cook. I will be a good wife. I will not check your phone. I will not give you headache. And I will be a good mother to our children. Uh -huh. So if you want to propose, go ahead and propose. Or if you, if you want me to propose, I will propose. Let's marry. Why are you all laughing? You think I'm, it, it sounds funny, but I'm not, I'm not joking about it. Which law says only men must propose? Is it God's law or human? Which country's law is it? Which law says only men must propose? Tell me. There is no law that says a man must propose. And you are not a loose girl. Listen, you are not a loose girl. When you're under this kind of scenario, I see. You see somebody who likes it but doesn't have the courage and you do that to approach him and ask for marriage. You are not a loose girl. A loose girl is not the girl who takes the courage to break the convention to talk to a guy to marry her. A loose girl is the girl who will still be playing hard to get, but she's dating several men. That's the loose girl. Break the law. Nothing will happen, my dear. Nothing. And as I speak to you, there are many ladies who are happily married today. They were the ones who approached the guy who married them. Break the law. When there is opportunity, you are waiting for him to come and talk to you. Mm, if I talk to him, they will say I'm a loose girl. Now why can they lose marriage? <laughs> and you want to marry. For those who really want to marry. He brought the law convention. There are many conventions you need to break. There are many conventions. There are some laws that are even gender discriminatory. It doesn't come from God. Society just put it for something. So sometimes it's working against the interest of particular people. Break the law. Law that is working against your interest. It doesn't even come from God. God does not make a law that is going to work against your interest in the final analysis. You break the law. You have to be stubborn like that leper, like Esther. When Esther entered the presence of the king, it was a law. If you enter the king's presence without being scheduled for or being invited by the king, you were going to die. Go and read that scripture, the book of Esther. When Esther came before the presence of the king, the Bible said he froze. He was looking like she was looking like what? Like a ghost. Because she knew the words, the consequences. But how would she have known that God is well, with her if she did not take the courage to break that law to save her people? There are times you break certain laws. There is a very critical question Father John Oloma asked. And that question is, who gave us this law? Who gave us this rule or command or commandment, if you like? 
that men ought to propose propose marriage to their ladies rather than the other way around. Who gave us that law? Who told us that it must be a man to propose first? And that question is a very, very important one. Oftentimes in our society, we tend to follow some sort of rules that are not gender considerate or gender favorable. Anyway, I don't want to talk long story here. But that was the question Father John Uluoma asked. Remember Aisha Yusufu? Yes, that fiery, feisty woman that we know of in Nigeria during the Peter Obi presidential campaign and even before the Peter Obi presidential campaign rallies and everything. Do you know that she proposed to her husband? She was the one who made the first move. She was the one who saw this guy, liked him, felt he was going to be a good fit for her children, for her children to be, and approached the guy and said, Hey, uncle, I want you to be my husband. And today they are happily married. You can go ahead and find out. That was what happened. There are many people today who got married and the men were not the one who made the first move. Their women, their wives were the ones who said, I love you and I want you to be my husband. Oftentimes, we are taught or we are told that if a woman approaches a man like that, it means that she is weak, it means that she is loose, it means that she is, the, the word we are told is desperate. So do not go for such people. But that is not what the Bible even teaches us. Do you remember the story of Ruth? How she made her move when she needed a kinsman redeemer. She made that move to Boaz. She gave him what we call in Nigeria a green light. And that was how she became the great, great, great grandmother to King David and eventually became a part of the lineage of Jesus. She took a chance and today she is celebrated as one of the four women, the four non-Jewish women to, um, to be honored in the lineage of Jesus. I'm not going to say more than what, than what I've said. I mean, clearly, Father Aloma was not missing words here. And he gave some specific conditions. So I would like you to think about that. In an age we are today, where it kind of becomes hard for women who are in their 30s and even in their middle 30s to get married. Don't you think this move, this suggestion, or this, shall I say, command by Father Uloma holds water? Don't you think so? So, let us know your thoughts in the comments. 
a lot of people, by the way, when Father Oloma said this, had their axes out, claiming that a woman who does that would end up being abused in the marriage. Aisha Yusufu, the woman I mentioned in um, about earlier, does she appear like someone who has been abused to you? I just want you to, to think about it. Think about the conditions that the Loma had mentioned. I mean, this is just common sense. And you and I know there are stories that are bound of women who made the first move to their husbands. And Father Oloma clearly stated the difference between those who are considered loose, unquote, and those who are responsible. A woman who is responsible will see what she wants and acknowledge that it is good and ask to be a part of it and ask to be a part of forming a family, a family that would be godly, a family that will raise godly children. The opposite of that will be a woman who will pretend to be available and then begin to date other men, sleep with them, and make it look as though she is not interested in marriage. In other words, she's playing hard to get. She's playing hard to get. Meanwhile, she has three, four men waiting for her somewhere. That is the loose woman. So, what do you have to say about Father Oblomar's, um, or what would I call it, bold statement? Yeah, that's the word, bold. Father Oloma's statement is bold and it has wisdom embedded in it. Placing it vis-a-vis -vis the experience of Jesus and um, the leper. Would we say there's wisdom in his words? Thank you so much for watching. Talk to you soon.